Hi, this is Charlotte Reeves from Unleashed Education and you've tuned in to another editing toolbox video. We publish these videos weekly and they include a quick tip, trick or technique to help you improve your pet photography editing. In this video, I'm going to be talking about camera profiles. So you might come across camera profiles when you shoot. You can actually change to a different profile in your settings. And some common ones you might see are standard, landscape, portrait, neutral. So if you shoot in JPEG, these profiles are actually embedded in the image. They apply to the image and change the way that it looks. If you shoot in RAW, only the preview on the back of the camera will have the profile applied. When the RAW file leaves your camera and goes elsewhere, say onto your computer, it's up to the software that you view the RAW file in to determine which camera profile is applied to the image. So because it's a RAW file, it's just like with white balance, that profile is not embedded into the file. So when you bring your RAW files into Lightroom, a profile will be applied and this is generally determined by the one that you use most. So you can see your profiles in the develop module here over under profile, there'll be a drop down list. So if you would like to browse the profiles, you just need to click these four little squares here and that will bring up the profile browser. So in Lightroom, you immediately have the Adobe Raw profiles. Now these are the standard Adobe profiles. And you'll see that as you hover over each profile, it gives you a preview of what the image will look like with that profile applied. Now I'm not a huge fan of the Adobe profiles for my camera. Some camera raw files will respond nicely to these Adobe raw files, but I don't think my Canon ones do, so I never really use them. What you should also have here are camera matching profiles. Now, these are the same profiles, or they should be the same profiles that you see when you're looking at the settings in your camera. That's why they're called camera matching profiles. Now, if you hover over these ones, you'll see how they apply to your image and they actually give quite a different look. Some camera manufacturers have a ton of these camera matching profiles and some just have a few. So also in the profile browser here, you'll find any other custom profiles that you might have downloaded and installed. I have these color fidelity ones here. And then Lightroom also has these inbuilt artistic profiles. So there's a bunch of different artistic looks you can apply to your image. Black and white conversions, which can be really good to use if you are converting your image to black and white. And modern vintage. Now with these artistic profiles, if you select one of these, you can actually, let me just choose one here, vintage 10 you actually get an amount slider at the top here. So you can change this slider depending on how strong you would like that look to be in your image. You don't actually have that slider with the Adobe Raw and with the camera matching profiles. So the big question is, which one do you choose? I think this is really just up to you. I generally just keep it on the standard camera matching profile. I find that really suits the looks and the tones that I like to see in my work. But on the odd occasion, I might change it to landscape because that tends to boost the colors a little bit more. If it's a really contrasty image, I might even change it to neutral or faithful. I find standard and portrait are really quite similar. So if you do find yourself using a particular profile really often, you might want to add it to your favorites. As you can see here in all of these camera matching profiles, I have a little star in the corner here. So you can just click where that star is to turn it off or on, and that will then put it into your favorites list here. Now, when you close the profile browser, your favorites are what turns up in this drop down list here. So you can change what appears in that drop down list depending on if you have starred these or not. So I've just removed those two from my favorites and now I only have the four in my drop down list. So as you can see, choosing a different camera profile doesn't change any of the other settings of your image. It's just a starting point. So you'll still then need to go in and make adjustments to the image to get that shot looking how you like it. I also recommend that if you have a bunch of shots that are quite similar, use the same camera profile for them. So for example, for these shots here, I might use camera standard so I can get them looking nice and consistent. But for shots taken in different light, so for example, this landscape shot here that was taken at twilight, I might actually choose a different profile because 
I like the colors better in it. So I might go for maybe some more neutral tones or faithful tones in that one. And then I would apply that profile to any similar images. So I would definitely recommend going in and playing around with these camera profiles. Open up your profile browser, check out what's there, add some to your favorites and start incorporating uh, camera profiles into your workflow. I hope this has given you some more ideas of how you can enhance or improve your pet photography editing. Thanks for joining me and I'll catch you next time.